Yes, now let's all bow our heads in prayer. Our holy and merciful Father God in heaven, Lord, you washed away our sins forevermore through your precious blood. You saved us without asking for anything in return. You raised us up as sons of God and gave us the eternal privilege and hope of being, being able to enter into the kingdom of heaven for that great glory and grace. We do thank you. Uh, Father, we do know and realize that uh, you have saved us not to give us the vain and materialistic things of this world. We know that you seek to give us eternal and everlasting glory in heaven. Uh, while we are still remaining upon this world, I ask, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we, we do know and realize uh, that we, you want us to live in accordance to your gospel and service of you. Uh, Father God, we who have been redeemed through your precious blood have uh, gathered together to sing praises of your grace, to learn about your word, and to share fellowship likewise with you. Father, we do know and recognize that you are with us. Lord, please watch over each and every one of us uh, so that we will continually fill ourselves with the grace and love you can provide. Please help us so that uh, we'll be able to live uprightly as your children uh, for the remainder of our lives. Please sanctify us with your words of truth. Lord, those brothers and sisters who could not be here today, and those brethren who are listening online as well, Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit will be upon all of us, that we will be able to take upon uh, the grace that you have granted us for all of our churches here and abroad over the entire world. We know that there are many brothers and sisters who, in the midst of great hardship, are preaching the gospel and they are being led and guided, of course, by your Holy Spirit. Lord, please help us so that no one uh, will escape the palm of your almighty hand and your infinite protection. Lord, for those of us who are sick, I ask that you will heal us so that we will be able to live the remainder of our days uh, for you and your purposes and lord for those of us who are for those of us who have uh, under, are under trials and tribulations i ask that you be with us and protect us lord please instruct us as to where we ought to go and what we ought to do uh, lord i ask that uh, for this time and the sermon you'll instruct us with your holy will and an understanding of uh, where your will resides, please give us a wisdom to be able to understand your words and likewise give us a strength and courage to be able to live the rest of our lives for your gospel. Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit will guide us throughout this time and I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Uh, we um, we will hear the prepared praise and then proceed to the sermon.
Thank you very much. Let's open up our Bibles. Let's open up our Bibles to John chapter 14. Uh, John chapter 14 from verse 16 through 17. John chapter 14 from verse 16 through 17. Uh, I will read. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Yes, up till there. <clears throat> uh, due to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, um, there has been great uh, continuing turmoil around this world, and many, of course, have lost their lives, and many more are indeed sick um, and in a great deal of pain and suffering, uh, our country uh, in South Korea has uh, uh, stabilized somewhat or stabilized until uh, very recently, um, uh, although it uh, has uh, peaked recently. 
I do not think uh, this will last long. I do believe that we ought to uh, be careful, continually bear caution, um, so that none of us will fall prey to this disease. I think we have to be uh, awake and alert so that we will be able to do so. Uh, we cannot um, uh, lose our guard. Uh, we have to continually wear uh, our masks, and uh, um, the masks in particular are a very potent tool against the virus, and to restrict ourselves from eating outside um, uh, because things are quite serious. Uh, we, of course, um, uh, are within the body and the multitude, which is the church. If, uh, <clears throat> uh, if one of us falls sick, then right, uh, it, it can cause uh, uh, great harm for uh, the entire multitude. So we ask that you'll take the proper precautions as a result uh, for today uh, through the words that we have read. Um, uh, these are, of course, are the words of Jesus Christ, and they are very important words indeed. Uh, in John chapter 14, uh, 15, and 16, uh, these are words that were given by Christ uh, to his disciples uh, the night before um, his crucifixion upon the cross. And um, uh, within these words are words that are uh, like a eulogy in nature and also um, uh, uh, words that have a great deal of meaning to us as Christians. Um, we as born-again Christians, um, are, are these words are likewise given to us for us as born-again Christians, and that is why we ought to consider them deeply and in kind. We all know why we have to study the scriptures. It is through the Bible we can learn more about God, we can learn more about Christ, and likewise we can learn more about the work of the Holy Spirit, which works in all of us. Um, it is how we can come to understand how we as Christians ought to live, and it is how we can and come to learn how we ought to act and proceed as uh, Christians. In John chapter 7, verse 17, it says, If anyone wants to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. Right? If uh, anyone has a heart of uh, obedience towards the Word of God, they'll be able to have an understanding of the Word of God. Yes, uh, in terms of worldly knowledge, um, we can learn worldly knowledge if we make uh, an effort. However, divine knowledge cannot be obtained merely through our minds. Uh, we must uh, have the help of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and... Uh, <clears throat> In order for us to receive the teachings of God, we must humbly beseech God uh, and live in accordance to the will of God, and with that yearning and contrite heart, seek after uh, the knowledge and the word of God. Without such uh, a heart, uh, we will merely listen and uh, forget. Uh, those who do not have a heart of uh, obedience will um, not be able to change no matter how many things they listen to, no matter how good the, the word of God may be. Um, if uh, it is, uh, you know, it, or no matter how good some certain foods may be, if that person is not in good health, that will be of no avail. Uh, the Word of God is likewise. Uh, the Word of God is given to each and every one of us. Um, and these are words that I ought to take into action in my own lives. Uh, that is how we ought to listen to the Word of God and the message of God uh, in order for us to have an understanding of the Word of God. Um, amongst the many things that Christ Jesus said, uh, here he says, uh, and I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. 
Now, Christ Jesus here, uh, before his death upon the cross, and of course before he died, uh, he he rose in thirty days, and you know before he would ascend in heaven after a period of about forty days, um, he was speaking of a very important thing uh, that uh, uh, that would happen after all those things came to pass. He says, "I am praying to the Father that he will give you another Helper." And that he will abide with you forever. Now, this um, another helper um, is uh, is is uh, is someone who would abide uh, by uh, uh, with, with the disciples, with all the believers of Christ, to be with the believers of Christ and to help uh, the believers of Christ. So that's what uh, the helper. We're speaking of, of course, the Helper is speaking of the Holy Spirit, um, that he will give you another Helper and that he may abide with you forever, it says. Uh, God is eternal, Christ is eternal, and the Holy Spirit likewise is eternal. Uh, and because of this, uh, in the Old Testament, of course, um, g uh, God worked as the Holy Father, and and of course the most important figure in the bible is christ jesus uh the birth and the death and the resurrection resurrection of uh of christ jesus the ascension of christ jesus is the core element of the bible and uh and of course uh the old testament testified how christ jesus has come upon this world to die and redeem the people uh from their sins and as promised christ jesus arrived and fulfilled the prophecy of salvation that was of course given to him um however however the time that was uh the time that was um granted for christ upon this world was a very short 33 years um uh, the, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, um, it, 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 of course, that, that time, uh, that was granted, uh, for Christ was, uh, exceedingly short, but the grace that was given to, to us through Christ Jesus, uh, has not ended. That grace has continued through the Holy Spirit itself, and it, it is, the Holy Spirit is the being that is still with us today. Um, it says in verse 17, this is indeed the Spirit of truth the world cannot receive because it neither sees him uh, nor knows him. Um, this helper, uh, this helper is he who has uh, has sent for born again Christians, and that is why uh, non believers or those who do not believe in Christ, um, uh, uh, you know, the world is speaking of uh, gen Gentiles, those who are not saved, those who are neither see Christ or know Christ, those who have nothing to do with Christ, and of course are not have not received salvation, the Holy Spirit uh, cannot receive or cannot be with these people, uh, but you know him, it says in verse 17, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Uh, the, the Holy Spirit itself it not only helps us realize the grace and the truth of the gospel and the word of God, the Holy Spirit likewise is always with us, will always be uh, with us. Uh, you know, Christ Jesus for three and a half years uh, performed his ministry upon this world. Uh, and, and as a part of his last uh, ministry, in the last years of his ministry, he walked, of course, uh, 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 with uh, his disciples. And yes, there were many more disciples uh, uh, besides the 12 that followed Christ and uh, learned from Christ. But the 12 disciples in particular were right with, right next to Christ. And they lived and they went wherever he went. However, the Holy Spirit itself dwells inside of us. Uh, the God of the Old Testament um, spoke only to the people of Israel, and he revealed himself to the people of Israel. Christ Jesus uh, came a to, upon this world uh, to save all sinners, but the Holy Spirit is different in that the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, being the embodiment of the life and the grace of God, um, 
uh, is that which implants inside each and every one of us when we understand and receive the gospel, when we receive salvation, and the Holy Spirit provides us with our strength. So what the Holy Spirit itself does is different uh, from the other two. Um, uh, the life of a Christian, of course, then is uh, a life that must be bound uh, by the help of the Holy Spirit, a life that must be bound by the teachings of the Holy Spirit, uh, um, a life that must be instructed by the Holy Spirit, and that is why uh, uh, if a born-again Christian does not have an understanding of the Holy Spirit, he will not be able to live a proper Christian life. Uh, and now, as uh, time allows, we will try to learn about the, the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, you know, if someone says one uh, knows something, uh, for some, uh, uh, you know, if you say, is that person dependable or trustworthy, uh, then uh, that will be predicated upon how well you know that person. If you want to entrust a good task to a person, you must really know who that person is. You cannot do so with a person that you have no knowledge of. To know a person means that you know what kind of person that person is. It also speaks of the, the relationship you have with that person, uh, a parent, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, their children, not only do they have knowledge of one another, right, they are bound by, um, by blood. Uh, that is, a uh, um, that it, uh, that is a true fellowship that is shared within the family. A husband and a wife, likewise, they truly do know each other. Uh, maybe not perfectly, of course, but more than any other, perhaps, relationship. A husband and a wife, and 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 that is how that fellowship can be established. And um, and our friends, likewise, from from childhood, we know our friends. We know who they are. We know who they are as people. And of course, uh, we ought to make good friends and not bad friends. Um, that is why it is important for us to truly know, um, to know God through the Bible, to know of Christ through Scripture. In John chapter 17, verse 3, it says, and uh, this, are one, this is one of the prayers of Christ Jesus. He said, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus whom you have sent. Yes, we obtained eternal life through faith and faith alone, uh, but faith itself is also likewise predicated upon uh a firm knowledge, right? We must have firm knowledge to have firm belief and firm faith. Uh, you know, if I believe in something that I do not have firm knowledge of, uh, is uncertain, and therefore that faith is likewise in uncertainty. If I know something with certainty, then my faith likewise will become certain. We have studied the scriptures through the Bible, and uh, we have, through the scriptures, come to understand um, who Christ is to me. And uh, it is the Holy Spirit, likewise, that uh, works within us and dwells within, within us. That's what the Bible says. Uh, and because the Holy Spirit dwells within us, we must know about the Holy Spirit. We may know a lot about God or about Christ, but uh, it could be the case, so, or, or uh, this is my feeling, that many of you do not know a lot about the Holy Spirit. And... Um, uh, I do think that it is uh, beneficial for all of us to learn about the Holy Spirit in John chapter 20, uh, verse 21 through 22. Uh, this is when Christ first appeared to his disciples after his resurrection, and he showed the wounds on his uh, hands and his feet, and he said, uh, Peace be upon you. And having said this, he says, uh, As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Uh, Jesus Christ uh, um, was sent to fulfill uh, uh, fulfill the work of salvation upon the cross, and once he fulfilled that work and he rose again, he spoke to his disciples, um, and and affirmed as to why he was sent, and as and he had affirmed. Um, 
uh, the mission that was given to the disciples as born again Christians and likewise to all of us. And breathing, he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. But why did he breathe upon them and say, Receive the Holy Spirit? If you go to Genesis chapter 2, uh, God formed. Uh, a man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils a breath of life and man uh, became a living being. That, that's a verse that is read there. Um, that that breath of life is the breath of God. Uh, God was he who breathed life into, 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 into Adam uh, because we are not merely of flesh. Uh, we also have a spirit that was made in the image of God and that was what was given to, to Adam. Uh, that is a breath of life. And so to breathe uh, the breath of life is acquainted with the spirit. Um, uh, um, it, it, there's a Greek word named poema, uh, which speaks of uh, a, a spirit and breath. Uh, and of course, as the Bible says, that breath breathed upon them and they um, came to life. Right, that breath gave Adam life. Um, when, uh, uh, you know, when Adam ate of the fruit that uh, he was commanded not to eat, the Bible said that he would surely die. Um, and uh, Adam and Eve, of course, uh, failed to obey the words of God, and they followed the words of Satan himself. Uh, what died on that day? Adam lived uh, to a very ripe age of uh, 930, I believe. Uh, but the reason why he, uh, he died on that day wasn't his flesh that died. It was his living spirit that died that day. Um, we had a sermon about the living and the dead uh, um, last time. Um, yes, as born-again Christians, or those who are not born again, may have a flesh that is alive, but their spirits are dead. That is why when God looks upon this world, it is filled with those dead that are walking. Right? Uh, when we are saved, we are made alive who are formerly dead in trespasses and sins. <clears throat> um, uh, Jesus, of course, uh, became a living spirit for all of us. Uh, that is why in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45, it says, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. <clears throat> um, in order to be a life-giving spirit, he had to pay, Christ had to pay the price uh, for sin uh, because the wages of sin was death. Um, uh, as it says in John chapter 5, verse 21, So as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he wills. Uh, Christ was he who came uh, into this world, this world which was filled with those that were dead to trespasses and sins. He came here to pay the price of sin, which is death, for all the world that they, all the world might have, might be able to be redeemed. Um, all the sin that uh, came into this world starting from Adam, uh, Christ Jesus took upon, and he paid the ultimate price for the sins of the entire world once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Through the death of Jesus Christ upon the cross, he bore all the sins upon the cross, and he died upon the cross, and he rose on the third day, having broke the bonds of death, of Hades itself, and gave us a, a living testament, an eternal testament of salvation. Uh, it is through the death and the resurrection of Christ, uh, Christ uh, became a living spirit to us. That is why he was able to breathe upon them. What that really means is this. Yes, the resurrected Christ was able to breathe a living spirit upon them. Right? Receive the Holy Spirit. However, the, whole, the disciples did not receive the Holy Spirit at that moment. It was only after, uh, 40 days after, uh, it was only after the ascension of Jesus Christ uh, on the Pentecost when they did receive the actual Holy Spirit. But when he said, uh, receive the Holy Spirit, he was testifying to them what would come. <clears throat> uh, uh, 
when we receive salvation, we likewise receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes upon us. Uh, <clears throat> in First Peter chapter one verse three. Uh, it says, Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope uh, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Um, this verse, likewise, uh, uh, is uh, t testifying of this. John chapter 3, verse 5 says, unless one is born of water and spirit, uh, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. People have a very common misconception about the water and the spirit. You know, some people think that uh, uh, when I pray to God very earnestly, I feel a wet feeling upon my back, and that is what the Holy Spirit. And some people likewise say that baptism is the water, and it is only through baptism I can receive the Holy Spirit. That may seem to be right, but that is not right as well. Uh, the water and the Spirit, well, what the water testifies of is the righteousness of God. Uh, God uh, judged the world through water in the time of Noah's flood, uh, during the time of Noah. Uh, 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 but uh, if God works to us to judge all of us with his righteousness and the entire world would be destroyed, and so, and so, uh, the judgment that all of us as sinners ought to have received was poured upon one representative instead. Uh, it is speaking about the death of Jesus Christ. And with the death of Jesus Christ, the righteousness of God was fulfilled. Right? If, um, uh, if God uh, simply overlooked sin, then God would not be a righteous God. Yes, the righteous payment of, of sin m must have been, uh, had to have been fulfilled. And Christ Jesus paid that ultimate price for sin uh, once and for all in order to fulfill the righteousness of God and pave the path for God to pour his love and grace upon us. In the same way Jordan, I'm sorry, Christ went down to the Jordan River and was baptized, it was testifying of the death and likewise the resurrection of Christ. The water and the spirit is testifying uh, of the death of Christ the fulfillment of God's righteousness and the resurrection of Christ to, to give us a new life and a new hope. That is why the Spirit is of a new life, is of a new hope. The Holy Spirit uh, is that which helps us understand the will of God, is that which gives us new life in turn. Uh, to have received new life, to have received the Holy Spirit, um, is, these things are one and the same, you see. Uh, the death and the resurrection of Christ, the redemption of Christ, and um, in other words, um, to be s redeemed through the Word of God, uh, because everything is pertained or contained within the Word of God, and that is why, likewise, through the Word of God, we can realize uh, our salvation. Uh, and it is likewise through the Word of God that we can receive the Holy Spirit, because that is what the Word of God says. It is the Holy Spirit that helps us understand uh, all of these things. And so these things, of course, are essentially uh, one and the same. Um, the Holy Spirit... Uh, is that which helps us understand the grace of God. The Holy Spirit is that which helps us receive salvation. And the Holy Spirit is that which resides within the hearts of each and every born-again Christian. <laughs> um, when you receive salvation, right? Uh, God did not say, I'll meet you in heaven. No, God, the Holy Spirit, dwells inside our hearts. Until when? Uh, from here for eternity. God will be with us for all of eternity in heaven. Uh, and that is why it is important for us as Christians to have an understanding of the Holy Spirit. Because when we have an understanding of the Holy Spirit, we can have a true fellowship and we can uh, be led uh, into his guidance and his help. Uh, so then what exactly is the Holy Spirit then? Uh, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit as a part of the Holy Trinity, God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are three and yet one. 
um, amongst what we believe, uh, we, we, uh, amongst our core beliefs and our core doctrines, this is one of the most important thing. When I was uh, in, in seminary college, uh, you know, that we learned about the Holy Trinity, and they were trying to explain it to us, but they weren't very good at it. Some people said, um, well, um, uh, it's the same energy. But, you know, sometimes energy, like electricity, can be fueled in light. Electricity, electricity can be revealed in heat. Electricity can fuel power, you know. Uh, um, uh, and that's how they explained it. Um, or they say the water flows, but the water rises, the water freezes, and it can become a lump of ice. And, and you know, or or you can and you can hit someone with it and strike it, or it becomes snow, it becomes vapor, um, or but it is water. Uh, it it explained it in a lot of different ways, but they weren't very good ways. Uh, some people uh, said, uh, um, um, they say, well, he can be a husband. Uh, the same person can be a husband, uh, but he can also be, and he is also a father. And when he, when he goes to church, he can be a pastor. Uh, he has different roles, but the person is one, or so on and so forth. But uh, these are not perfect explanations of the Holy Spirit. Or, I'm sorry, of the Holy Trinity. Uh, 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 um, that is why there are those, there are Christians who do not believe in the Holy Spirit. They s and uh, those who do not believe in the Holy Spirit are, of course, a part of... Uh, 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 heretical uh, sects of Christianity. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, for example, do not believe in the Holy Spirit. Uh, but there is one thing that we must know and realize. Um, um, the amazing and wondrous things of God cannot properly be uh, understood by our limited knowledge. Um, uh, can we ascertain the great depths of God's knowledge with our own limited knowledge? Uh, there are things that cannot be understood, and yet we must believe those things likewise because the words of God are truth. Um, uh, the whole, the God, the uh, God, the Father, Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are three separate beings, but they are likewise one complete being. Uh, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, uh, when God, uh, in the midst of creation, uh, said lastly, uh, let us make man in our image. Yes, uh, who is us here? Uh, there is one singular God, but us is not singular, but plural, right? Uh, were there multiple gods? No, there, was, there is always one God. But why? Is, is, is it that God is saying here, let us make man in our image? Yes, uh, the Father God, uh, Christ the Son, and the, and the Holy Spirit speak of three in one. And um, in Genesis chapter 11, uh, when the people were trying to make and erect a tower of Babel, uh, God says, come, let us go down and there confuse our language that they may not understand one another, uh, one another's speech. It says, let us go down there and confuse our language. It's a little strange, but that likewise speaks of the Holy uh, Trinity likewise. And likewise, if you go to John chapter 3, verse 11, it says, We speak what we know, and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. Christ Jesus likewise is speaking of we. He was not speaking of him and the disciples. He was speaking of Father God, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We speak of what we know, and testify of what we have seen. Um... Yes, because Christ is equal to God. He knows all that God likewise does. And when he says, uh, there is no one who has uh, ascended into heaven as, uh, as I have, he is saying, there is no one who can entertain uh, the things of God as I can. And when he, that is why he is speaking of what we know. 
and testify of what we have seen. This is also likewise speaking of the Holy Spirit. And um, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, um, when Jesus was being uh, baptized in the Jordan River, yes, there is an image in which the Father God, uh, Christ the Son, and the Spirit of God is revealed in this exact same moment. Um, uh, the, the Christ the Son was um, was uh, was uh, being baptized in the water. Uh, the Spirit of God uh, descended like a dove, and God the Father spoke, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And so, at the moment of the of of Christ's baptism, uh, uh, the all three uh, uh, the the entirety of the Holy Trinity was revealed at the same time. Uh, in uh, Mark chapter 16, likewise, uh, Jesus Christ tells his disciples, Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He says, Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. They are equal beings, and yet they are one and the same. And um, in in Romans eight verse nine, uh, it says it talks about the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ, and the spirit of the Father. Uh, it's speaking of, of of all of these things. Uh, uh, these are all one and the same. You see. Uh, it's not that there is a separate spirit of God and a separate spirit of Christ and a separate spirit of the Holy Spirit. No, these 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 are one spirit. They are one of the same, but they're also separate entities. Likewise, at the same time, uh, the, uh, um, and uh, we have to understand uh, that uh, about the nature of the holy uh, of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so some people think of the Holy Spirit as some sort of flying flying power and they try to grasp a hold of the holy spirit and use it for themselves this is of course likewise is wrong the holy spirit not only is he a part of the holy trinity um the holy spirit has uh, a, a willpower uh the Holy Spirit has emotions and uh, feelings. The Holy Spirit itself is a sentient being in the same way, uh, 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 you know, you know. Uh, but of course, uh, in the same way all of us are, but of course, we are not perfect sentient beings, but God is, is a perfect being, and the Holy Spirit likewise is a perfect being uh, with sentience. Because God knows all, the Holy Spirit likewise uh, knows all. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, But God has revealed them to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, it says, uh, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were raised, or I'm sorry, whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Now, you know, when a son does wrong, then it causes their parents great shame. Uh, when a son of God does wrong, then it grieves the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit grieves, it means that God is likewise grieving. It grieves the Holy Spirit. Uh, and in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, it says, <clears throat> um, uh, uh, For we do not know what we should pray as we ought, for the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with Groanings can that cannot be uttered. It says groanings here. You know, you know when you're right. You know when your child is being very immature, then there is the groaning of a mother and a father wondering when their child will mature. Uh, the Holy Spirit likewise has a groaning, and the groaning ma and the Spirit of God likewise makes intercession for us upon our behalf. It prays for us upon our behalf. Uh, and the Holy Spirit, um, uh, loves us. <laughs> yes. Romans chapter 15 verse 30 says, uh, there's a, there's a portion of the verse that says the love of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit loves us very deeply. God loves us. Christ loves us. 
And the Holy Spirit has that same love and care for us, right? Um, right how, and, uh, you know, who can, of course, uh, love more than a father and a mother, but the love of the Holy Spirit supersedes them all. Uh, in James chapter 4, verse 5, it says, Or do you think that the Spirit says in vain, uh, the Spirit dwells in us, yearns jealously? Let's say uh, a man uh, found out his wife was seeing another man, or, or, or a woman found that her husband was seeing another woman. Would it not be? Would it be fine? Would it be absolutely okay? No, they would be intense, seeing jealously, uh, because the Holy Spirit loves us so much. If we love the world or the things of the world, that is why in uh, James chapter four verse four it says, "Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God?" Uh, do you not know that friendship with the world is to be a, a, an enemy of God? Um, when a, a wife uh, it likes another man more than the husband, the people of this world at times see in so much jealousy that they even kill their wives. They become an enemy of their wives and they commit a grave crime. Of course, that is very wrong, but we have to understand that the love the Holy Spirit has for us is even greater than the love of a husband and a wife. And yes, it, is, it causes intense groaning and jealousy when the Holy Spirit finds that we love other things more than God. Um, in Likewise, if you go studying the Old Testament, um, there are many, many times when the people of Israel uh, were disobedient against God. And it says that the Spirit grieved. We have to understand that the Holy Spirit likewise is um, not just some weird, strange power. It is a being, a sentient being, uh, uh, with knowledge and with willpower and with strength and of emotions, and it grieves when we likewise fall into sin. Uh, there is also likewise the work that the Holy Spirit does, yes. Uh, and of course, the Holy Spirit is... Um, is uh, is uh, rejoices greatly. Uh, if you go to Luke chapter 10, verse 21, it says, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit. It rejoices. It, it, it's sorrowful at the same time. When he lived in accordance with the will of God, the Holy Spirit rejoices with us. So do you want to please the Holy Spirit that is within you, or do you want to grieve the Holy Spirit that is in you? You know, you must please the Holy Spirit. Had we not to. Uh, there, and if you examine the work that the Holy Spirit does, um, in uh, Genesis chapter, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter 31, um, it's it says, "I have filled him with the Spirit of God." That expression is uh, in many places in the Old Testament. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Almighty God. Uh, however. Uh, the Spirit of God in the Old Testament was only revealed and dwelt in uh, prophets and, and, and likewise uh, to testify of things to come uh, with the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, but and in Matthew chapter 1 verse uh, 18 it says that the birth of Christ was as follows of um, um, <clears throat> and his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph. She was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Christ was uh, conceived by the Holy Spirit. And uh, when Christ uh, was baptized, uh, there was a voice of he heaven that said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit testified of the truth that Christ was indeed uh, the Son of God. The Holy Spirit, likewise, through the life of Jesus Christ, um, testified of God. Uh, testified of the Word of God. Testified of the works of God. Testified of the... The, the word of God at the gospel of God. If you go to uh, Acts chapter 1, verse uh, uh, 
of Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says, God anointed Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Yes, when Christ Jesus was doing his works and his and and showcasing his the power that he had, he was likewise doing so through the Holy Spirit. Uh, and all the great works that he did, the miraculous things that he did in terms of healing uh, the sick and feeding the poor, was done so with the power of the Holy Spirit. In he Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14, it says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, a cleanse your conscience from dead works who serve the living God? Yes, um... You know, Christ Jesus, right, was offered to the eternal spirit to cleanse our conscience from dead works. What this means is this. The Holy Spirit died upon the cross to cleanse us from sins. Uh, he completed this work, all of that work, through the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit, our work of salvation was accomplished by Christ through the Holy Spirit. Um... <clears throat> Uh, that the promises of God bestowed upon the people of Israel uh, in the Old Testament. In accordance to those promises, uh, Christ Jesus came. And Christ Jesus accomplished the work of salvation and the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, 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 through born-again Christians from Judea to Samaria to the ends of the world, ends of the earth has testified of that gospel truth uh, to the entire world. And that is why when Christ, before Christ ascended into heaven, he said, uh, um, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. The Holy Spirit testified of the work of the Holy Spirit, and that is why in John 15 it says, um, <clears throat> But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me, and you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. Yes, uh, the Holy Spirit was that which came to testify of the work of God, the work of Christ to us. The Holy Spirit is not some power, some strange power that dwells upon high. The Holy Spirit dwells in each and every born-again Christian and compels us to preach the gospel. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit we shall be witnesses to God in Judea and Samaria. That is what the Holy Spirit does. Um, that is why when Christ died and resurrected and ascended into heaven, uh, after he did so, ten days after, uh, the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples uh, in the Pentecost. And and uh, from that point onward to now, we call the age of the Holy Spirit and likewise the age of grace and likewise the age of the church. The Old Testament, um, God worked mainly through the people of Israel. And now, after the Holy Spirit has come, the Holy Spirit works through the church and through the saints of the church, through the born-again saints of the church, and testifies of the grace of Christ through the church. That is why they call this age the age of grace, uh, the age of the church, uh, the age of the Holy Spirit. This is our time. Uh, when this time is up, then Christ will come and judgment will be unleashed upon this world. We are living in this great age of, of grace. Uh, and that is why there is need for us to realize and understand what exactly it is that the Holy Spirit does. And there is need for us likewise to live our Christian lives. Our Christian lives, we must understand, is being lived with the Holy Spirit. If you don't understand this, uh, you won't be able to live your Christian life correctly. Um, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit... Uh, uh, 
came into this world, then first and foremost, what did he do? Let's go to John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verse 8, from verse 8. John chapter 16, from verse 8. John chapter 16, from verse 8 through 11, I shall read. <clears throat> and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Yes. Uh, uh, when the Holy Spirit, the Helper, comes, uh, the work that he will fulfill is likewise, is this. He will, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. The Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin. What does this mean? Right? He will bring into understanding that which is not known, right? Of sin because they do not believe in me, first and foremost. Now, um, uh, through the Holy Spirit, God rebukes this world of sin. And when the Holy Spirit itself reveals sin, it is, it is not merely speaking of uh, the sins of <coughs> breaking the laws of God, it is speaking of the sin of not knowing God and not believing in Christ. And that is the sin that this is mainly speaking of, because the greatest sin of all is not sort of a uh, sin that ha that has broken the, uh, the covenant of God or the laws of God. It is the sin of not believing in Christ, not believing in the gospel, and that he will convict the world of. In John chapter 3, verse 18, it says, He who believes in him is not condemned. Right? Because Christ Jesus has taken upon the... The judgment that we already have, that we ought to have received. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Yes, yes, he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed the name of the only begotten Son of God. Right, um... The judgment that should have befallen upon us was passed over through the blood of Christ, right? And now the only sin that remains for anyone in this world, really, is the sin of not believing in Christ. The reason why people go to hell is not because of the weight or the gravity of their own sins. In 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 First John chapter two verse twenty, uh, verse John chapter two verse two, it says, "And he himself is a propitiation for our sins, uh, and not for ours only, but also the whole world." Right? He is not. Uh, he died for the sins of the entire world already, not just my sin, but the sins of the entire world, uh, even those who do not believe. Right? And none of us are at enmity with God because of our own sins. But that doesn't mean that this entire world is automatically saved. We must believe in this truth. If I don't believe in this and it is of no use uh, or value to me, uh, it doesn't matter how good the air may be. If I do not breathe it, then I will, I will die. Um, uh, um, Right, God has reconciled the, the God has reconciled us to to Him through Christ. But if I do not believe in this, then that sin is a sin that convicts us to judgment, and that is a sin that the Holy Spirit will condemn. In John chapter eight, verse twenty-four, it says, <clears throat> "In John chapter eight, verse twenty-four, it says." And if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Right? If you do not believe that for that I am he, you will die within your sins. If I do not believe, then I am have no part in the in the grace of God, and therefore I will be convicted by that sin. Of righteousness, because I go to my father and you see me no more. 
Yes, through the death of Jesus Christ, uh, we have been saved. Uh, through the resurrection of Christ, our salvation has been affirmed forevermore. Christ himself is our righteousness. When we have belief in that same grace, that saving truth, then we have life and we have become righteous before God. But if I do not believe in this, then it is uh, of no use to me. Uh, when we believe, we have been sanctified through that belief. Uh, and likewise, it says, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Um, Satan, of course, brought a sin into this world by tempting Adam and Eve. Uh, he he uh, planted wickedness in the hearts of all of mankind. Um and works within uh, the spirit of wickedness. However, it is through the Holy Spirit that power of Satan has been judged. That power uh, has been judged, uh, and now Christ has become our righteousness, right? The power of Satan, right, of judgment, uh, is no part of us anymore. That is what we have to believe. But the problem is that people do not believe. And that is why that is sin. That is what the Holy Spirit is indeed testifying of. In uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 37, it says, um, uh, uh, <clears throat> Now when they heard this, uh, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, um, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Right? When they heard the, the, the preaching of the gospel through Peter, they were cut to the heart. They repented. They repented. The Christ we killed was, the man we killed was Christ. Then what, what indeed shall we do? We killed the Son of God. What indeed shall we do? Right? Uh, uh, and therefore, what does Apostle Paul say? Apostle Peter say, "Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. The Holy Spirit convicts sin and helps us realize sin. When a person listens to the Bible seminar, sometimes they listen with uh, a closed heart. Right? Uh, they." Um, do not repent of their sins. They have no fear of judgment. And they think, uh, if I go to sin, that's too bad. Uh, I'm not going there alone. Why is it that their hearts are so cold? It's because their hearts are closed and they are refusing to accept the Holy Spirit. However, even those people like these, even those people, when the Holy Spirit does its work, can be brought into submission by the Holy Spirit. That is why those who have closed hearts, we cannot be disappointed in them. We must continually pray for them. We must continually ask God for for their forgiveness, because it is the Holy Spirit that can really wake someone's heart and help them uh, receive salvation. Uh, uh, those who were struck to the heart, and that day when Peter was preaching, uh, there were 3,000 on that day who were saved. In Titus chapter 3, verse 5, it says, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us uh, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. When we are, ourselves were saved, we were not saved through our righteous deeds. We were saved through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. We are saved through the mercy, the mercy, but the mercy by which uh, the mercy of Christ, the mercy of God. Uh, it is the blood of Christ who has sanctified us, and it's the Holy Spirit that renews us. Yes, it is the washing of regeneration of Christ and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. All of this is the work of the Holy Spirit. And that is why the Holy Spirit convicts sin, helps us realize the grace of Christ and works uh, sal uh, works uh, uh, for the gospel of Christ inside our hearts. The Holy Spirit likewise uh, uh, 
uh, works in the hearts of those who listen to the word of God with a sincere desire. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, it says, Now we have received not the Spirit of God, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been given freely to us by God. Yes, when the Holy Spirit comes, right, it helps helped us understand, the one the Spirit came, it helped us understand the grace of God. It is not because our minds uh, we have we have are so. Uh, uh, it is not because of our intellect that we are able to receive salvation. In 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 Acts chapter sixteen, when Apostle Paul was preaching, um, uh, there was a certain woman named Lydia whose heart was opened by the Lord to heed the words spoken by Paul. Uh, Lydia, uh, who was the first woman, the first person to be saved in Philippi. Uh, when Apostle Paul was speaking, the Holy Spirit opened up Lydia's heart and helped her have an understanding, right, of the gospel. That Holy Spirit, right, is worked within all of our hearts likewise and still is working in our hearts today. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 6, it says, And which has come to you, as it has also in all the world, and is bringing forth fruit, and it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. It is the Holy Spirit's role which does this from, 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 from this day forevermore. This is the start of our new life. Uh, in in first peter chapter 1 verse 23 it says having been born again not of corruptible seed but incorruptible through the word of god which lives and abides forever right it is the word of god there is a seed a seed a living seed an incorruptible seed uh, the living seed of the word of God. When the, uh, when the word is testified, then it is a seed with life, which is planted inside each and every one of our hearts. That is how salvation, uh, uh, that is how we are all able to receive salvation. Uh, 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 when that gospel is preached, and when uh, the Holy Spirit opened our hearts, it is the Holy Spirit which opened our hearts to the truth of the gospel. It doesn't matter how how a person may be listening it doesn't matter how a person may be studying the bible without the work of the holy spirit they will not be able to understand a single word and most certainly they will not uh, be able to receive salvation this is a very serious uh, uh, matter <clears throat> Romans chapter 8 verse 16 says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The Holy Spirit comes and bears witness to us. Uh, when the Holy Spirit testifies the gospel to us, yes, it brings us from death into life and likewise testifies that we are now children of God. That is why we can call God Abba Father. You know, when a young child, uh, one, you know, one of the first words a young child learns how to use is mother or, or dad, mom, right? Um, uh, uh, you know, to say daddy, mommy, um, you know, mama, dada, those are words of life. Mom, dad, uh, those are words of life. Uh, these are uh, words of life. Uh, uh, when we receive... Uh, uh, salvation, we receive the Holy Spirit, and it is through the Holy Spirit we are able to call God Abba, Father. Uh, uh, in in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, says, um, Our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Spirit, and in much assurance, not only in word only, but also in power, in the Holy Spirit, and in much assurance, Yes, when the Holy Spirit comes, it is that assurance that I now have in order for us to believe. No, uh, you know, 
I went to church when I was young, since elementary school, and I went to Sunday school every Sunday, and then I went to a seminary college, and I learned the Bible for quite some time. And before I was saved, I, you know, was a practicing minister. I, 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 I preached. I preached in the pulpit. I read. The New Testament about 50 times and the Old Testament about 30 times. I would read a chapter of the Bible before I ate. Uh, you know, I thought I can't do anything else in the world. At the very least, I'm going to learn the Bible. And I diligently, diligently, diligently studied. But one day I realized uh, that I wasn't saved because I had no experience of having received uh, salvation. And, you know, I asked myself, if I die today, I'm going to go to hell. I can't even say this to anyone. And I was very, I was worrying about this. But it was in 1962, in uh, in October 31st, in 8 p.m., that I realized the grace of God. I, I, have, I have firm belief in it. I had, I had, I had listened to uh, the word of God in so many fashions and so many times, but it had not entered my heart. It was mere knowledge. But now... At that time, I was able to receive the words with great power, with truth, uh, uh, to receive the gospel of the salvation of God. And of course, the life I lived after was completely different. Uh, um, the gospel did not come to you in word only, it said. And in Ephesians chapter 1, verse, uh, verse 13, it says, in him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Yes. Yes, it says here, uh, you after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, in whom you also believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You know, let's say you buy a book, right? A book that you like. It's your book, so you sign the book. And this is my book. It's in my possession. When you buy a house, likewise, um, uh, um, right? Uh, uh, right? You, 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 on, on the title or, or whatever it is, the, uh, you have to sign your name upon it. Um, likewise, it, when we receive salvation, right, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. You are mine now. That is what the, that is what God is saying. You are now mine, and the Holy Spirit gives testimony to this. There are so many things that the Holy Spirit does. It is uh, a truly a marvelous thing. The Holy Spirit gives us assurance, testifies that we are indeed of Christ, uh, and also um, the Holy Spirit itself um, uh, not only work not only does all of these things, but it dwells in the heart of each and every born-again Christian. Not only does it perform these things, it dwells within our hearts. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 2, it says, Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Yes, when we hear the words of God, we are able to receive the words of God through the help of the Holy Spirit. However, when I receive uh, salvation... Um, uh, um, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know any of this. I didn't know what it was. But the one thing I knew with assurance was that Christ Jesus had died for all of my sins. I knew that all sinners were convicted to an eternity in hell. But I knew that Christ had taken the price, paid the price of all my sins, and I no longer had to. Uh, I no longer had to fear condemnation. But when I studied the Bible, I realized, oh, that's what salvation is. That is what salvation is. And when I learned the Bible a little bit more, I also realized, oh, when I received salvation, the Holy Spirit all likewise entered into my heart. Uh, I, you know, I, the Holy Spirit was there, but I didn't realize uh, that it was there, right? Um, right? Uh, the Holy Spirit, which has entered into our hearts, it says, is that not likewise uh, an amazing thing? I must believe that the Holy Spirit is inside of me. In First Corinthians chapter 6, 
uh, the Church of Corinth and the brethren of Corinth, of the Church of Corinth, were saved, but they were still those of the flesh. Uh, they were like little children of Christ. Yes, uh, you know there can still be conflict, and and uh, many many things, um, many childish things, even for Christians. However. Uh, Apostle Paul spoke to the church of Corinth and said, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Yes, uh, the Holy Spirit, yes, they were saved, and they were likewise of the Holy Spirit. There can be no such thing where one can be saved but not receive the Holy Spirit. Yes, do you not know that inside your bodies the Holy Spirit dwells? Do you not know that because you you are saved, the Holy Spirit dwells within you, and therefore your body is a temple? Because they did not notice they committed those sins. Right? If I do not realize the Holy Spirit is within me, then I will defile my body with all sorts of sins. Right? I will commit all sorts of of sins, but because this is the temple of God, I must keep it in sanctification. Uh, if I know that my body is a temple of God, if I know that uh, the Holy Spirit dwells within me, um, then uh, I I will not do things that will grieve the Holy Spirit, that will disappoint the Holy Spirit, that will that will antagonize the Holy Spirit, that will that will disappoint the Holy Spirit. I will make the Holy Spirit comfortable. I will want to make the Holy Spirit comfortable. In the same way, you know, a son and a daughter, you know, ought not to grieve their parents or bring sorrow upon their parents, ought not to do any of those things. Uh, you know, when when you know when a mother sends her son far away, right? Uh, 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 you know, she tells her son, "My son." Um, you know, don't make bad friends, uh, and don't date bad women. <laughs> don't go to bars. Don't go to bad, sinful places. If you make bad friends, and I know that you have fallen into this, I might be overwhelmed with so much despair that I will die. Then the son, the son, right? Uh, uh, uh. uh uh, when he goes to, when he tries to go to bad places or meets with uh, bad friends, and he will be reminded of his mother's heart and say, "No, I will not do those things because I know that they will grieve my mother, and turn away from those things." Now uh, there's a, a general, um, uh, Yushin Kim, of the Silla, Shila Dynasty. Uh, was a very, very famous uh, um, general in Korean history, uh, but um, he was prone to visiting the House of Harlots, the brothels, in his youth, and his mother rebuked him, saying, you are destined to rule over this country. You must not partake in these in, in such a dirty thing to do, and he promised to his mother he would never go back to such a place again. Um, but one day he became very drunk and he was, you know, riding upon his horse and he found that he was right in front of the brothel because the horse, according to habit, was, uh, you know, right, uh, taking him to the brothel as he always, of course, frequented. And so the general, you know, took out his sword and he beheaded the horse at once. Uh, of course, the horse did not commit a crime. Uh, he was it was as if he was cutting his own throat he needed that determination to turn away from that crime <clears throat> uh, and um, the Holy Spirit loves us more than any mother you know the you know the mother of course may not be able to see because the mother is far away but the holy spirit is inside of us the holy spirit sees all he, the holy spirit sees all of my thoughts and all of my actions and everything that i do this is exceedingly important because the holy the christian life is that which i live in accordance to the holy spirit with the holy spirit and furthermore the holy spirit uh, in 
uh, uh, John chapter 7, verse 37, it says, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the Spirit has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. In, in, in John chapter 4, verse 14, it says, Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never drink, but the water that I sh- uh, shall give him uh, will become in him a fountain of water springing into life, springing up into everlasting life. You know, when someone, you know, is dying, he seeks after water to fulfill his thirst. You know, within this world, uh, there is nothing that can give us true happiness, whether it be money or power or women. None of these things can grant us true happiness because we have the matter concerning our eternity. Yes, a beast may be pleased over the the, the wasteful things of this world, the, the, the fleshly parts of this world, but because we as people, as human beings, are were fashioned in the image of God, without God we have no true joy. But the Holy Spirit um but the Holy Spirit when it testifies uh, that if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, will out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. This is really speaking about the Holy Spirit that will be a part of every single born-again Christian. When the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit gives us everlasting peace and true joy and true fulfillment. Why? Because the source of our true joy is God and God alone. It is only God who can provide us with true joy and happiness. You know, what joy and happiness can we obtain in this world that is eternal? In in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8, it says, uh, You rejoice of joy inexpressible and full of glory. Yes, uh, though now you do not see him yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Yes, Um. You know, it's, it says uh, there is no one who can possibly understand the happiness that we have received. In Psalm chapter 4, verse 7, it says, You have put gladness in my heart. You have put gladness in my heart more than in the season that their grain and wine have increased. Yes. This joy and peace that is within all of us. In John chapter 14, verse 27, it says, Peace I leave with you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let your heart, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6, uh, to the brethren at the church of Thessalonica, this was preached. Uh, and you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. In Thessalonica, uh, you know, when Apostle Paul came to preach, the Jews uh, sought to stone Apostle Paul to death of stones. There was great suffering and tribulation upon the church uh, in Thessalonica. And yet in the midst of that great suffering and tribulation, there was overwhelming joy provided to them by the Holy Spirit. And it was through that joy they were able to endure all the things that befell them. And they became those that looked upon Christ uh, and as an example Yes, no matter what sort of suffering may uh, we, we may encounter, there's a reason why we can rejoice. There's a reason why we can be joyful. It is because of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit res- res- resides within us. You know, hallelujah, he is our joy. Even when we walk through the, uh, the, the small path, uh, all throughout the entire night, the Holy Spirit dwells within us. Yes, yes, no matter what way of suffering we may Uh, have to take, uh, we can partake in joy because the Holy Spirit resides within me. Now, we are are those who will live the rest of our lives with the Holy Spirit inside of us, bound by the Holy Spirit and led by the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm trying to make my sermons a little shorter. 
But if I want to say everything I want to say, but today I really do want to keep it a little uh, short. <laughs> so for today, I think it was only half of what I wanted to, to preach to you today. But um, we're, uh, I, there are so many things I do want to continue learning about uh, the Holy Spirit. And... It is through the Holy Spirit we're able to realign the grace of God. It is through the Holy Spirit uh, uh, we are able to realize the grace of God. It is through the Holy Spirit we are led uh, uh, to live in accordance to the will of God. So we must live carefully within the Holy Spirit. The time of Christ is coming very, very soon. And until Christ comes, we must be, uh, be, be live uh, and led and guided by this Holy Spirit. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Uh, Father God, I thank you. Lord, we who are dead in our trespasses and sin, we who were at enmity with you, uh, uh, were shown compassion uh, uh, through your death upon the cross. And Lord, we seek to live the rest of our days uh, in accordance to the Holy Spirit that resides in each and every one of our hearts. Um, please help us so that we'll continually remind ourselves about the grace that we have received. Please uphold us in accordance with the Holy Spirit so that we, our hearts will not be taken aside by the wasteful and sinful things of this world. Please sanctify us so that we'll be able to live ably as your children. I thank you and I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.